Good evening. Good evening. It is my pleasure to welcome every member of the audience to an evening of elucidation of one of India's oldest classical dance traditions, Odyssey, the lyrical classical dance form from the state of Odisha. The style finds mention as one of the four regional varieties by Bharata in his Natya Shastra as Odra Magadhi. May I request everybody to maintain silence, please? May I request for silence again, please? I will repeat. The style finds mention as one of the four regional varieties by Bharata in his Natya Shastra as Odra Magadhi. Odyssey incorporates many a tenant of this defining text, text in its technique. Although revived only in the middle of the last century, the style is now popular all over the world. Ladies and gentlemen, we are very privileged to have a living legend of Odyssey dance, renowned for her deep insight into its history and current evolution, present an introduction of Odyssey in the Lekdem today. She would be explaining its technique and highlighting its various aspects. She has been a part of innumerable festivals across the globe and is globally acclaimed for her deep insight into the art of choreography and her commitment to train and encourage new dancers to finer nuances of Odyssey. A recipient of numerous awards at national and global level, the list of her accomplishments and awards are so vast that it is not possible for me to mention all of them here due to time constraints. She was awarded the Padma Shri by the President of India in 1990. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce Madhavi Mudgalji to you. Madhviji, may I formally invite you on stage, please. I also warmly welcome Arushi Mudgal, her disciple, who will be assisting her in this like them. Namaskar. I'm indeed privileged to be a part of this convention. Uh, all of you are involved in conserving various traditions of our country. And in a way, I think we artists are also doing the same. Uh, the living traditions that we have inherited from our gurus, we continue, as you will see, uh, from uh, my guru, I have learned, and then we pass on this tradition to our next generation. The Guru Shishya Parampara is very vibrant in our classical arts. As you all know, that Indian classical dance combines almost every art that we can think of, starting, of course, music, literature, painting, sculpture, architecture even. So it's a composite dance form all Indian classical dances have this uh, various aspects of using literature, music, through the body forms. We use the sculpture, especially Odyssey does. And uh, the music is what we enliven through movements. I would like to just straight away begin with uh, a Mangala Charan traditional invocatory item that we perform in the beginning of any, any, any classical style uh, as an offering of flowers to Mother Earth. And then I will present um, an, an invocation to Lord Jagannath, the presiding deity of Odyssey. This is written by uh, Shankaracharya. 
And the music is composed by Srimati Sunanda Patnayan. And the choreography is mine. Jagannath Ashtakam.
was the Mangala Charan. You might have noticed the description of Ratha Yatra of Lord Jagannath on his temple spire. His flag is waving on the Ratha. He is Arudha. And the devotees pull him, pull the Ratha, sprinkling flowers, charmer. Various instruments are played when the Ratha Yatra take place, takes place. This is what was shown towards the end. And as you all know, that Lord Jagannath resides with his sister Subhadra and brother Balabhadra in the temple of Puri. Archaeologically speaking, Odyssey dates back to the second century BC because the caves near Bhuvaneshwar, Udayagiri, Khandagiri caves, show a rock cut panel of a dancer in a formal presentation of dance. Unlike the Mohanjadaro statuette, which the scholars say is a dancing girl, it's known as a dancing girl, but it could be any woman standing in this pose. But this panel shows a dancer with her musicians with a king and queen and an audience. So this is really the first sculptural re representation that we find in our archaeological evidence in any form of dance. And then we also have many innumerable sculptures in the temples of Orissa, basically beginning 6th century till about the 12th century, earlier Shaivite, then you know, the temple of Jagannath at Puri, but the Vaishnavite temple. So the different religious waves swept Orissa and the temples were built, but there was always a dancer who performed the ritual of dance in the temple. And it is believed that without the presence of a female presence, the puja is not complete because the dance, the tradition of Devadasi represents that female presence that completes the puja. Therefore, the dance was performed. And in terms of architecture, we also have the Natamandap built in almost all temples that you see. The Konark temple, of course, is a virtual vocabulary of Odyssey dance sculptures that you see even today in a dance performance of Odyssey. Uh, after the 12th century, we also have many textual evidence, palm leaf manuscripts that speak about this tradition of dance and music in Odisha. And uh, therefore, the tradition continued by the Maharis. Maharis are the Devadasis, they're known as Maharis in Odisha. And when there were foreign invasions uh, in Odisha, 15th, 16th century, the tradition of little boys dressing up as girls and dancing, called the Gotipurs. Gotipur literally means a little boy. So the boys dancing as girls, this, they didn't perform inside the temple, but outside the temple and on, on religious festivities, they used to perform. There were akharas or gymnasiums where they were uh, patronized by zamidars and kings, where they practiced the art of dance. Of course, it was not very sophisticated because they were little boys, pre-puberty boys. And, but they were instrumental in continuing the tradition till it was revived. Because uh, by the beginning of 20th century, the dance had, the, the dance had gone in, into oblivion with the British rule. There was hardly any performance of, as, even as a ritual in the temples. But the Gotipuas continued. And, the Maharis were present in the temple, but they used to only sing at the time of uh, then the Lord would sleep at night. They would see, sing Gita Govind. Gita Govind is another text, 12th century Sanskrit text written by Jayadev, which has continued from 12th century to this day, even we perform the Ashtapadis of Jayadeva. So this tradition through literary context through the living traditions of Gotipur Maharis, 
continued. And when the dance had almost died out, it was only in the 50s, late 50s, that scholars, dance gurus, they were, most of them were Gotipuas, the three main gurus of Odissi who were part of the revival, Guru Pankachurandas, Guru Deva Prasad Das, and my guru, Guru Kirushan Mahapatra. They were the three stalwarts who worked with scholars and they studied sculpture and created, recreated the form that you see today and which is so popular all over the world. Odissi, like all the other dance styles, has two main divisions in terms of refer in reference to dance. And this comes from the Natya Shastra, the, sec the earliest uh, compendium written about all theatrical arts. It's an amazing text written more than 2,000 years ago, which speaks about every aspect of a theatrical presentation, starting from what the architecture of the a theater should be, what the stage form should be, about the costumes, about voice production, about music, tal, lay, abhine, bhava, rasa, everything is there. So imagine it, 2,000 years ago, there must have been a very vibrant tradition of theater in our country. That's Bharata was able to make, theorize it and put it for us to, you know, refer to. To this day, we have tenets of these, uh, of the text in our dance. So the thing that I'm talking about, the two main aspects of nritta and nritya. Nritta, nritya is actually a common uh, word that we use in reference to dance, but technically speaking, nritta is that aspect of dance which is only tal and laya. The movements follow abstract designs in tala, the tala structure that has, uh, the, the music has the tala structure, and the composition of music does not have any literary content, but rhythmic, either the bowls of pakhavaj or the swaras, and the composition is based on that. And ritya is where we use facial expressions and codified hand gestures, it's a complete language of hand gestures that we utilize to interpret a song that is sung by the singer. Today, since it's like them, we don't have our musicians. But the musicians, the singer sings a song and the dancer interprets it with her expressions and hand gestures. So we will be showing you the two different aspects. Uh, the nritta aspect abstraction, beauty in form, movement, space, and the real space is in the tala structure, the designs that are woven within the tala. A Pallavi in Rag Shankarabhanam, this is created by my guru, Guru Kalishwan Mahapatra, and the music is by Pandit Bhubaneswar Mishra, Shankarabhanam Pallavi. This will be performed by Arushi.
So that was uh, the Ritta aspect that was visualized in this piece. Just a little bit about the technique of Odyssey. All the other, all the dance forms basically follow a grammar. A grammar in terms of dance, what is it? It can be the way you move your body, the way you position your legs, the way you have uh, the articulation of each limb. Each style has a different way. The, the way, first of all, in which we position our body. In Odyssey, there are two main body positions. One, the choker, a very masculine, squarish position. Lord Jagannath's hands are also in this position. And Tribhanga, which I'm sure a lot, a lot of people here would be able to explain better than I can. Tribhanga in Odyssey, Tribhanga, three bends, simply that, three bends of the body. The first bend at the neck, the torso, and the knees. So this position that's formed is Tribhanga. A lot of, most of the sculptures in the temples are uh, in the Tribhanga position. People involved with sculpture can tell you the vertical axis and the horizontal axis, how the sculpture, a classical sculpture in a temple is imagined. Also, you know, you see each, each part of the body is governed by a certain set of rules. How we move our eyes, how we move our hands, how we position our hands, how we position our feet, some of the foot positions. Each of them have a name, but it's just enough to know that there are these uh, body foot positions, body positions, the way we move our hands and uh, the whole uh, technique in Odissi like the Odia language, the Odia culture is all rounded. It's not staccato, it's not like in straight lines. In Bharatanatyam we could stretch a hand, but in Odissi we will only stretch it till here. So there's certain um, differences that come from the that the region, the regional flavor of the, of the earth percolates into dance. So these are some basic uh, things about the technique of Odyssey. Nritta and Nritya aspect I had already explained to you. Nritta was what you saw. I will do just a short piece of Nritya. Of course, it also has Tal and Laya but it has literary content. And as I explained earlier, our dance is a combination of all these. So here I present an excerpt from Kalidasa's Ritu Samhar, describing the spring season. Kalidas says, Drumaha Sapushpa, the trees are laden with flowers, the ponds full of lotus, Young girls full of cupids, uh, struck by cupids, arrows are full of fashion. The breeze is scented with the beautiful flowers. The whole air is suffused with the cries of Brahmara and the coil. Drumaha sapushpa salilam sapatnam striyaha sakama and so on. It goes on. Uh, Basically, he says that Vasant arrives in all its splendor, striking the hearts of young and old, imp uh, striking young people, basically arousing love in their hearts. Spring is supposed to be a friend of uh, Vasant, is a friend of Kamadeva. And, uh, Shringar is the ultimate love. L love that is one of the main rasas in all, all our arts. So this basically describing spring season, Kalidasa's Ritu Samhar.
After Vasant, we move on to another Abhinaya piece, a Nritya piece. In Urisi repertoire, we use various languages for Abhinaya, like you just witnessed, that was Vasant in Sanskrit. The piece that I now present is an Odia song. A lot of Odia songs uh, in Odissi uh, talk about the love of Radha and Krishna. In this particular song, Radha has seen Krishna for the first time and falls in love with him instantaneously. To this, Radha's friend, the Sakhi, she teases her. It's a very playful song where Radha's friend is teasing her and saying, Oh, beautiful eyed Radha, look at you. You're of no use anymore. You have gone and done the impossible, that is, falling in love with none other than Krishna. She then says, <laughs> being so small, you thought you'd be able to pluck the flowers of heaven? If you choose to sow seeds of sorrow in your heart, Radha, you'll end up being hurt. Look at you, lost in his thoughts all the time. She says, you are no snake charmer, who can, who can control the greatest of snakes? That Krishna who conquered Kaliya, you think you can control him? She says, if you play around with snakes, you're bound to be bitten. And finally, she says, what have you eaten, Radha, that you're intoxicated so? Let me warn you, my friend, if you choose to sleep on a bed of sharp swords, it'll result only in wounds. Look at your pitiful condition, O Radha. You're of no use anymore. Khara po tu helu re in Odia. Tu bilkul kharaab ho gai hai, literally. Uh, the uniqueness about this song is that every line of the song begins with the same alphabet. In this case, the alphabet kha. Kha champu. Uh, choreography of Guru Kelu Charan Mahapatra.
I'm quite at a loss for words, but uh, I think I speak for every member of the audience that now we know what it is to see a living legend in action. And uh, I tell you, a big, big round of applause for Madhavi ji. And Arushi, Arushi, I see another legend in the making. May I request Chairman Intact Major General L.K. Gupta to please felicitate Madhvi ji. And Anita ji, if I could request you to felicitate Arushi. Come Arushi. I would like to thank I would like to thank my dear friend Mrs. Shamim Varadrajan for connecting me to Madhvi ji for today's event and thereafter it was a breeze so thank you so much Shamim Ladies and gentlemen we have completed two successful days of the National Conveners Conference and it is only appropriate that I thank the team members who have been phenomenal in their organizational skills and hard work. Let me begin by naming some young members who were part of the core team. We have Mitali, Koshagra, Ritika, and Smita, who have literally worked round the clock and were always available for calls and for any kind of change last minute. Thank you so much. And guiding them and working alongside the most senior team members, Purnima, uh, I think Purnima has left for the day, group captain Arvind Shukla, Ashwini, and do forgive me if I have missed out any other names. And all the team members collectively thank and guide our mentor, guide and mentor, intact member secretary, Dr. Shuden Mishra. <laughs> Ma'am, come in front. Ma'am, come in front, please. No vote of thanks would be complete without the mention of the captain of the ship, whose zeal and passion for intact is unmatched. And that is, ladies and gentlemen, as you can guess, our chairman, Major General L.K. Gupta. I thank each and every member of the audience for not only today, but their first, for their sustained effort for Intact's mission. Tomorrow, we have an early start. We begin at 8.30 a.m. for the first session. And so for now, it is good night. 